If I say my gifts will make room for me and bring me before great men, John Stewart is saying your skin color outweighs what God has endowed you with. I have an issue with that. How crazy. The, the literal interpretation of the American dream is that, is it doesn't matter where you were born or how you were born or who you are, that in this country, you can rise up and go beyond that. And it turns out to be a fallacy. This is especially offensive to me for three reasons, Jason. One, as a product of rape, born to a 15 year old girl, two, as someone who was raised in the church with biblical values, and three, as an American citizen. What he said is offensive for these three reasons. When I think about my childhood and what I was taught, I was never given an excuse to be less than. I understood that I had to work hard, but it never felt like a burden. It never felt like something that was said to me because I was oppressed. Like who wants to be mediocre? I call you some days after the show, Jason, to get your feedback, not because I'm black, not because I feel like because I'm black, I'm stupid and I can't do it. I call you because I know that with guidance and direction, I can set the game on fire. Like I believe that I have everything that I need to be the best that I can be. So for John Stewart to say that I can't do this because I'm black, it's foolishness to me. When I think about the way that I I was raised in church, you know, what to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. John Stewart is saying, mm, well, actually you can't because you're black. If I say, if God be for me, who can be against me? John Stewart is saying, Whitey, the white man has his foot on your neck. You can't do it. I know God said you can, but you really can't. If I say my gifts will make room for me and bring me before great men, John Stewart is saying your skin color outweighs what God has endowed you with. I have an issue with that. And so it bothers me that somebody would say these things against how I was raised with biblical principles and with my mother telling me that I can do anything that I put my mind to. And as an American citizen, it bothers me because I have had generations to come before me that fought to get me to where I am today. There is no reason that I should ever feel oppressed. And, and I liken that to when I go to someone's house, uh, Jason, I, I don't relax. You know, if I sit on the couch, I sit on the edge of my seat. I may look to the left and to the right just in case they have roaches. I don't really get comfortable. But when I'm in my own house, I sit back on the couch. Sometimes I even put my my feet up on the coffee table because I'm at home. That's how I feel in America. And I feel like generations before me fought so that I could feel like I'm at home. Like I can feel like this is my land. This is my country. And I feel like they don't want us to feel comfortable. They don't want us to feel like we're at home. They want us to feel that this is not really where we belong. And I, Royce has said this before, and you all talk about this all the time. It'll be easier to usher in global globalism if we don't value our nationalism. If we don't think this is our country, then we'll easily say, let's get rid of the constitution. Let's get rid of everything that says that I have rights right here in this land and, and go to, to you know what they want us to do and be one with China and be one with all these other countries that we can't trust. I'm not doing that. This is my home and this is my land. So as an American citizen, it bothers me that he wants to say black people don't have the right to the American dream or it's unobtainable. That's a lie from the pit of hell and I am not buying it.